Hey guys, so this video is a bit of a time machine. I decided to try something a bit new, a bit different, but not new and not different at the same time. So I went on SubTG and this is the oldest thread I can find on TG from Worst DM Scotch Player Stories. So uh, bear in mind the year was 2009, so some of this may be very much outdated, but hey, let's try this out, will we? Worst DM slash Player Stories. Hey guys, I'm in an odd mood. So I'd like to hear some stories to make me feel a little better. Stories about horrible players, terrible DMs, or just really shitty role-playing situations you got yourself into, or were thrust into. For me, one of the worst was the first time I played D&D with a group of people. The DM constantly stopped talking to watch TV. The other players were obviously bored, and so forth. I helped set everything up and got all the players together. I helped the newbies and the bitchy wife who didn't want to play but put up with her husband's stupid game. So he gets it all together, and he lets anyone play anything. So one jackass makes a character with four templates, and is a level 3 monk. He ran at an MR of 150. He killed the first encounter by himself. I stopped playing after the second time. Why did I go twice? I was bored. I still can't get the smell of spoiled milk out of my... Why? 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 <sighs> I, I'm not even going to bother asking why is the boy watching TV instead, but <laughs> I don't obviously get that. it's like, well, do you want to just watch TV, guys? Yeah. This isn't working. Let's just get Let's, a pizza and watch a movie. Yeah, I think everyone will be a little happier with that. Yeah. What good movies came out in 2009? I think Watchmen was out. Yeah. Watchmen would, would have been a good one to watch yeah. them. What other movies from 2009 do you guys enjoy? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Let's just do this, will we? I once had a group where one of the other players was an assassin. Naturally, he was going about what he does best. He was supposed to assassinate some evil wizard or something. At this point, he wasn't part of the party. So anyway, we walk in on his failed assassination attempt. Now the wizard has gone burko and started summoning shit from out of nowhere. Now, I assume our DM's intent was for us to aid the fellow player against the evil wizard. A few problems there. A. The guy had a camouflage on, and we just saw him try and kill a guy who was just sitting there. And B. We didn't know the wizard was evil at the time and had no reason to fight him. So naturally we backed away and left him, not wanting to get drawn into trouble. Apparently the DM doesn't know how to improv. The assassin died and the wizard went on with his business. Of course. DM didn't expect this and just gave up. We all went, wait, what the fuck? That was the fifth campaign that he had started that didn't get past the first session. Usually he forgets what's happening mid-game. He doesn't DM for us anymore, that's for sure. He <laughs> sounds what? like a shit DM. What do you do with that? <laughs> I mean, like, look, I, I, I don't know. For me, I think improv is probably my favourite part yeah. of the game. Like, coming up with shit on the fly, let's just go with this. I'm really not one for sitting down and being like, right, let's plan this out to the ninth, and ninth degree. Yeah. And we're just going to go down a hallway. You know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's just a normal dungeon crawl. Like, let's just, come on, let's just start. Come on, let's go. We're blasting here, guys. We're going to blast. You want to blast. <laughs> I joined the campus D&D club for a game, and it was full of the most neck beardy stereotypes you could imagine. Are you shocked? <laughs> Are you shocked? No. <laughs> the DM had a massive hard-on for small races and melee characters, so naturally when I made a human sorcerer, everything went straight for my ass. He also hated magic, so I had to contend with shit like... Rule the hit with magic missile. What? Rule the hit? With ma magic missile. Like... What? Like, let's just keep going. And everything having at least SR15 at level 1. Then when I get our first rewards, everyone got a plus 4 weapon of their choice, while I got some bracers that turned out to be cursed. Shocking. So that's when I cast a spell. My hands exploded <laughs> and I lost my voice. <laughs> I mean, that's actually kind of funny, not going to lie. I love, I love this idea of lasers and big hands explode. He also had a DM player character, Kobold Fighter, who was basically a de facto party leader. Since he was like level 10 and had enough gear to buy Waterdeep. Worst R of my gaming life. I believe that. Like, yeah. Everyone should know by this stage, see if there's a DM player character, they should be killed immediately. Immediately. Immediately, <laughs> they need to be exterminated. They need to die. It doesn't matter what your DM pulls. You <laughs> must destroy them. Yeah. You must stop that out as quickly as humanly possible. My first DM was terrible. I was a new player, as were the four other members of the party. At first, he was all right. The first quest was the basic, the small defenceless hamlet of X is being pestered by race Y. Help us adventurers and we shall give you gold. 
My character was a lawful evil wizard and an old grumpy bastard. My motivation was pretty much just that I still wanted to have that hamlet there to shop from. I live on the outskirts of it. We fight the goblins and find out a young dragon was leading them. We were all level 1. Soon came Mr. Deus Ex Machina Gary Stew to save us all. After one in-game day, the dragon came back as a full-grown adult. It killed half of us. Nobody expected Mr. Stew could hit it and left after destroying my house. Then we were all railroaded into going to some huge city where we went dark brawling. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like to imagine it was actually dark brawling. <laughs> at this point, we were all done. Our characters just wanted to go to the market at this point. Mr. Stew, however, wouldn't let us. The conversation went like this. DM. Lightning falls everywhere, and then from the clearing smoke you see a large box. Out of it comes an old man. Brown. Hi, my name is Doc Brown, and you have to help me get back to the future. Honestly, as far as characters go to, like, insert, he's not the worst. No. He's actually one of the best ones you could if, yeah. if you were inclined to do so. Stu. Of course, Mr. Brown. We'll all help you. Players. Bill, this is fucking stupid. We all continue to the city and head to the market. DM. So you all go to the market? With Mr. Stu and Doc Brown. You start searching for his time machine. <laughs> I formulated a plan with everyone else to buy a bunch of flintlock pistols. After doing so, we killed Brian and got <laughs> killed by Stu. He was apparently level 20 all along. The fucker even showed us the street he made for him. We start over again before we kill Mr. Brown and go along with it. By the end of the session, we encounter Batman, <laughs> the Joker, Gordon Freeman, and Barry. <laughs> we never let Bill DM ever again. <laughs> Honestly, I think I would enjoy that just for the, you know, I've said this before. I've said this before. Like, you know, a lot of people call it the autism spectrum. I prefer to call it the, the wacky, wacky spectrum. <laughs> and this guy's definitely on the wacky spectrum. <laughs> and I feel like I would have a lot of fun playing with this. Although, I will say, honestly, killing Doc Brown... Can you imagine if your players got a hold of a time machine? How fucked would your campaign be? And now, the models of our website. Brought to you by neckbeardia.co.uk. Get you all some of these titties. Dwarf titties, or titties, cat titties, fat titties, the gases and wasses, the bit. Vampires and goblins and all the buff champions and even hentai, yeah that too. Dragons, mapticors, ogres and no sound bug bearers and even more to you go still. Undead and demons and then our friend Pally and definitely not 40k. What else? Dark elves and lizards and Megan the Slither and James the look cool as he stands. Beholders and kobolds and tyrants and only in a donkey with a frying pan. If you don't want no models, then no need to bother. We now have subclasses and teas. Also, Garbro's book. Go have a look. Check out the link to Kofi. Thank you for watching our videos and giving our channel a hand. But this is the end, our viewers and friends. So let's get back to the video, man. <laughs> I fucking hate myself. <laughs> there was a player in an IRC game I was in. His character was completely useless. Some kind of halfling fighter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I'm sorry. See, when it comes to like short player characters that aren't dwarves, yeah. I'm sorry, but whenever someone says, oh yeah, I'm going to play a gnome, I think of garden gnomes. <laughs> yes, yeah, so do I. I think garden gnomes. With their fucking stupid little hats That's, and their yeah, fishing rods. I, th I think yeah. of a mix between the Smurfs and garden gnomes. I just, I, like, I'm sorry. I'm sure there's a lot of you guys out there that really enjoy gnomes, but I just can't take them seriously <laughs> at all. So his character was completely useless, some kind of halfling fighter or something, and had no personality to speak of. We were raiding this duke's house because there was something really fishy about him. Turned out he was a lich and hired us to fetch his stolen phylactery. Successful raid until we were found by guards. One thing led to another and the upper story exploded as the gravity was reversed under us. The halfling, me, and this dwarf ranger go flying into the air, but I manage to cast Featherfall on them and cling onto the carpet. The halfling derps around and ends up taking minimum fall damage. He's at 5 HP. So then he starts rambling about how his eye is hanging out of the socket and is bleeding all over the place, and his arms are broken for no reason, and blah blah blah. He obviously doesn't understand what hit points are in the abstract. The cleric heals him and he decides that because the bones weren't set or something that the wounds closed up and he still looks mangled and covered in blood. The forest catches fire, can't recall why, and the halfling runs in, deciding on his own and without the DM having any input whatsoever that a burning branch falls on his halfling, kills him and burns the body anyway. 
He then begins building a new character. <laughs> you know, I, I something I, tell me that he started playing with him and just fucking hated him. Yeah, I think he decided. You know what? I can't just shit this character in the head. Let me try and do it myself. <laughs> yeah. His next one is an orc fighter instead. Ah, uh, there we go. He's getting better. <laughs> in a party of humans and dwarves. We were fighting orcs and trolls in the damned forest around a village at this point, and the player knew this. His uh, backstory is apparently that his tribe is all dead, and he's the only one strong enough to live, and he's out for revenge. He spends half of this session lurking in the bushes, watching the party. And believe you me, he really harps on about how he's not being seen, <laughs> and how well he's lurking in these godforsaken bushes, and watching the party. We find the entrance to what turns out to be an underground network of tunnels filled with troll thralls of a mind flare colony where a group of villagers have been kidnapped to. There's a pair of orcs guarding the trapdoor entrance. Our wonderful little player is hiding behind. You guessed it. A well-placed gathering of bushes. And the DM verifies for us that their minds are completely gone. He also tells the orc player that he does not recognise them and that they're from a hostile rival tribe of orcs, judging by something. Tattoos or weapons, markings or something. We attack and kill the orcs in truly impressive fashion. One of our players climbs a tree, leaps down from it, and crushes an orc under hundreds of pounds of metal, and spikes and muscle, for example. And then our orc player leaps out of the bushes, raging, and carrying on about how he killed orcs, and we're his enemy and rules to attack the nearest party member. What? Of course we make short work of him <laughs> and subdue him, taking 20 to tie his ass to an aforementioned tree before we go down into the dungeon. We emerge hours later, give him water, and leave him there while we continue our quest, which brings us far, far away from this village and his stupid orc character. We find out a little later that he spends the next two sessions telling the DM that his orc is the new big bad. <laughs> <laughs> well like big bad evil guy in the sense of fucking team rocket <laughs> yes <laughs> telling the dm that his orc is a new big bad evil guy and what's he, and what he's planning and how he's escaped his bonds with brute strength even though he's been rolling and feeling and is mathematically impossible we made a new channel where we had an op just so we could ban him from ever playing again fuck you chipotle I mean, I've heard a lot worse. I think he sounds. <laughs> I think he sounds like a character. I think he sounds like a wacky character. A very wacky character. I think. I love how he's just making like the he DM go- stories. Like, like I'm gonna be the new big bad evil guy. Just, just to <laughs> let you know. I th- I th- so I- put your story around this. <laughs> he's very enthusiastic, which I like. <laughs> yeah. I will give him. We that. love an enthusiastic player. Yeah, I-, I find it hard to fault them, even if they are making a <laughs> hack of it. He'll get better in time. I-, I hope he has. So I once had a pretty stupid moment myself. My first D and D campaign, a human bard oh, with eighteen constitution. I, I mean, mean, be a beefy boy, like big beefy boy. Big beefy boy. I mentioned in a post the other day about how I used to be such an HP freak who used a great sword. I think I was trying to be Link or something, I don't remember. Anyway, our party is going through an underground tunnel network, and at one point the cleric triggers a tripwire that sprays us with what we assume is water. Later that session, we enter a pitch black room. The cleric's low light vision needs a light source, so he tells me to light a torch. Oh, and I stupidly <laughs> decided to do so. At this point, I'm very glad I maxed my constitution. Because it turns out the water was actually gasoline. Oh. Mate, how do you not smell how it? How do you not smell it? Obviously, if you rolled to like investigate what this was, the DM should have said there is a smell. There's I, a pungent I, I, odor. I, I honestly water. don't even think you would need a roll. Everyone knows what flammable liquid smells like. Yes. Literally everyone. I can't yes. think of a single person. Unless none of them rolled for investigation. I, I, I would say they wouldn't even need to roll for it. They should just know this. I think this is one of those ones where you don't even need to... The DM should just be like, oh yeah, by the by way... By the way, it smells a uh, lot like gas. Yeah, so it's, Just letting you know. It smells very... Um, it's petrol. Yeah. <laughs> it smells like methylene spurts. Ensuing explosion knocks me down to minus 9 HP. The cleric survives on pure luck and heals me. I come to, I come to and see him scraping at a grease spot in the wall that used to be our rogue. Oh, poor rogue. Oh no. Poor rogue. You know what, guys... I'm gonna. We're gonna end this one. I'm gonna tell you guys a story. I've I've told this story before in the channel, but I'll tell it again 
just for the just for the fun of it because something like this happened to me in it was a while back now so it was it was a long time ago um, anyway so i show up to this game store and it's a one shot and the vulgar character sheet turned out yeah so i take the character worth well happy with that i've played a character worth before i quite like characters anyway anyway so we go on into it um we find this town we need to defeat the monster given in the cave cut a long story short we go to the cave it's basilisk we end up fuck like really getting fucked up by it it ends really partly but we do wound it and it runs back into the tunnel so it does <laughs> So, us and our infinite wisdom decide to all go into the tunnel chasing it. And at this point of the time, it's getting quite late. We started at about maybe 5 o'clock and it's coming up to about 11 o'clock, you know. So we have to kind of wrap this up and it's only a one shot, so let's go for it. So we go on in and uh, I go to for stone inspection because this isn't more than just a cavern. It's actually... Uh, you know, it's been carved. It's a natural mm-hmm. mine. Well, what used to be a mine. And you're a dwarf. I'm so. a dwarf. So, you know, it makes sense. But what I do find is a very eggy smell. smell. So I'm like, sulfur. Would I not know what's. A, a dwarf should know what's a sulfur. sulfur is. Like natural gases. Yeah. Then, like, you know, like, they're tunnelers. They should know this. So, what I do is, I don't really tell anyone else in character, and I don't even know if the other players really knew what I was doing, but we knew that the basilisk was way back into the deep bit here, and there was, like, a big pit. So, uh, what do we do? I ask the human fighter for the end of his torch, like, you know, mate, j- just trust me, let me take this off you. And he's like, are you sure? I'm like, yeah, no, come on, let's just do this, right? <laughs> so I take it off him, and I fuck it in the, the pit. <laughs> Um, the bard died. Sadly, <laughs> um, everyone else kind of um, yeah. I think the DM was kind of annoyed with me, but it was only a one shot. And, and that DM was a bit of a dick. Yeah, he was a bit of a dick. I'll t- I'll maybe tell that story another time though. Yeah, he was just a bit awkward. But then again, I feel like but you I, did ruin his one shot. Yeah, well, look, okay. I look. I've got a very strong personality. Okay, uh, I don't really blame it whenever I come in contact with people and they're like, James is an absolute dickhead. You know that? I you know I kind of. You know what? I kind of agree with them a lot of the time. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't think I'm that bad. But you know, like I don't, I don't blame anyone for you know taking me the long way or whatever. Because as I say, your strong personality. Yeah, strong personality would be a nice way to put it. So if you guys have any of your own stories, yes. definitely let us know them let down us below. Know down below. And I, look, I've said this a good few times. If you have enough of them, we'll do a video on it. We haven't got enough from any video in fucking ages. I know. We need to hear your guys' stories because yeah. I really want to hear what you guys do. And we haven't done a comment thread video in ages. Ages. So let's do it this time because everyone's got at least one story yeah. of a massive fuck up or a disaster. Yes. So let us know down below. And while you're down there, check out the links to the models, the t shirts, the subclasses, all that good shit. Hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post. And we'll see you in the next video. Bye. Oh, by the way, there's Blood Moon tonight. Go check it out, boys.